first order of business on any trip. Pacific Bold Kirkland Kirkland Blend. All right, this is an off the books, unofficial coffee test because I do Nespresso, I don't do Keurig, but here goes nothing. Very hot, very bold. That's a very, very bold, strong coffee, um, which for the purposes of running is always a good thing, so no complaints there. It doesn't taste the best, and I have no creamer, but that's okay. So, pretty good. That's a that's a sipper for sure. So as you may have guessed, I am in Florida right now. So it is, it's Friday. I'm gonna do a six mile run today. I actually don't know where I'm going and I'm not sure that where I'm at right now is the most pedestrian or runner friendly area, but I'm gonna find out. I do wanna at least see the water, see the ocean. But I've never run in Florida, so I will check off the fifth state of my 50 state challenge. There's a mosquito on me, an 8 a.m. mosquito. I didn't get him, so. So it's 9 a.m. and it's already, it's hot, humid. I'm not complaining, because it actually like, it feels good, but it's a different type of running than what I've been used to over the past six months, that's for sure. Bag button, got a bike lane. All right, I'm 0 for 1 on waving at runners and runners waving back to me. Uh, Florida, not off to a good start when it comes to runner friendliness. So from Google Maps, this street looks like a car focused hellscape, but there's actually a lot of people out walking, riding bikes, traffic is pretty slow. It's not a bad place to run at all. All right, I'm on some sort of like boardwalk. The ocean is just over those dunes. I might see if I can get to it, maybe on my way back. So there's a pier that goes out into the Atlantic it's a dollar to go out there apparently so i need to find a dollar somewhere because i don't have cash when i run there's a red flag is that bad that means it's it's smooth sailing right so i think tomorrow i'm going to try to film my 50 state challenge video for florida i'm gonna try to get up early maybe catch the sunrise that may be a challenge i am on vacation so i just got a friendly wave from a runner so jacksonville florida immediately vaults itself above Denver, Colorado for friendliness. When I ran on this beautiful trail in downtown Denver along this like river, nobody waved or smiled or even acknowledged my existence. The most unfriendly place I've ever run in the world. So sorry, Denver, but lighten up a little bit. All right, halfway, three miles, three to go. So listen, I complain a lot about drivers, but here's the deal. It's almost like making a two lane road with bike lanes on either side it helps to slow down traffic. Those two Chevys and BMW, if this was Michigan, they'd be going 50 miles an hour and not looking, but everyone goes slow. All right, I'm gonna go on a little, little boardwalk closer to the beach. See how far I get without getting sand in my shoes. Oh, not far. Oh. Welcome to the Fresh Run Club. This is the Nike Invincible 3 Sand Run Review. Just kidding. But seriously though. Oh. Eh, I might as well just run down to the beach, who cares? That's the boardwalk that costs a dollar to get on. So, you scrounge up some, some nickels so I can run on that maybe tomorrow. The beach is like kind of hard packed, it's cool. There it is, the Atlantic. All right, Invincible Ocean Water Review. So far, so good. Oh, oh, oh. So this sure is a little bit different than running along Woodward Avenue. <laughs> I think if I just drink the water, that's like the same thing as a noon tablet, right? Oh boy, coming in hot. All right, I touched the ocean get back at it. Ugh. All right. All right, four miles in, I'm starting to feel it. The humidity is uh, 
getting me. I'm officially three for four on runners waving back at me. I declare Jacksonville officially a friendly place for runners. Also, shout out my guy Aaron, not me, someone else, working the gate check at the airport. He's seen my videos. He's uh, gearing up for the Brooklyn half, so shout out Aaron. Best wishes in the Brooklyn half. I want to see a gator. Show me a gator. All right. That's it. 6.19 miles. Whoo, it's hot. Here's the best part. Come with me. This is the benefit of Florida versus Michigan. Well, that'll wrap up today. Tomorrow, I am probably not gonna film too much for the vlog because I will be filming the 50 state challenge where I run obviously in Florida, the fifth state. So won't be too much, but subscribe so you don't miss the 50 state challenge. I'm gonna do this all day. There's for sure gators in that ditch. I wanna get too close, but I kinda wanna see one. I've never seen a wild alligator before, so I don't know. Do I want to? Yes, I do. So I know yesterday I said I wasn't going to film too much for the vlog. I'm not going to. Running on the beach is actually a lot easier than I thought. So here I am. Again, I'm filming my 50 state challenge, obviously in Florida, but this has turned into an amazing beach run. Look at that. Look at that. They should put an oceanfront beach in Royal Oak, in my opinion. Now it's also very humid here, but look, I've been dealing with zero humidity and zero degree temperatures all winter, so I welcome it. I accept it. I embrace it. All right, wrapping up today's vlog content. I don't know if I'm gonna film anything else today. Ooh, gator, gator. Didn't see a gator. Awesome run. Check out my 50 state challenge video for Florida. Should be live Saturday after this video goes live, I think. Yeah, a lot of fun today. So one of those refreshing runs. All right, I'll see you when I see you. Is it really a, a travel vlog if you don't have a baggage claim shot back in Detroit. Hello, hello, it is Monday. I'm back in Michigan and it's supposed to snow today. So I'm not running today, not because of the snow, but just got some stuff going on, just getting resettled back in, unpacking my suitcase and whatnot. So not running today, but hopefully I'll run tomorrow. Today is the Boston Marathon, so I don't know if you're tuning into that very exciting Kipchoge coming to Boston, his first time there, so we'll see how that goes. Um, it'll be interesting. So very exciting. He has some cool shoes. So he's wearing the Alpha Fly 2s in this colorway that's like made to look like an old shoe called the Miler. Not the current Miler that you can buy in stores now, but like an old version from like the early 2000s. I love that shoe. I think I like cut pictures of it out and put it on my wall. So maybe Nike will put that out one day, but kind of a cool nostalgic colorway. So we'll see how that goes, but yeah. I'll be checking in periodically on, on the marathon. I don't know, do you have Kipchoge or do you have the field? And not to sound like a hater, but I'm gonna take the field on this one. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll do an update after the marathon is done just to see how, how wrong I was. How dare I doubt Eliud Kipchoge. Uh, but pretty cool, Boston Marathon, always an exciting event. That means spring is here. Although again, snow showers in Michigan, but um, I got some sunshine, so I'm, I'm feeling good. I might do a quick check-in after the marathon if something cool happens. We'll see. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to hit the old snowy trail tomorrow. All right, post-race wrap-up. I took the field and the field won. So anyway, that'll be the video for today. So I will see you tomorrow. It's Tuesday and the snow is back. But I'm not here to talk about the weather today. I'm sick of talking about the weather. I'm sick of the weather. Six mile run today, easy run. I did want to give a quick reaction to the Boston Marathon yesterday. I watched it. It was okay. You know, it wasn't the most exciting race I've ever seen on DVR television, but it was fine. It's definitely cool to see, you know, the joy that people have, the passion people have, the emotions people can get while running 
on something like ESPN. So I'm definitely a big fan of all the, the pageantry that comes with every Boston Marathon. I think like a lot of people out there, you know, we were all watching to see how Kipchoge would do. And then it became pretty apparent, you know, it just wasn't his day. Sounds like he might have missed a water bottle or something, but I don't know, that was kind of hard to watch. It felt like maybe the broadcast crew prepared a ton about Kipchoge, rightfully so, and not as much about the actual leaders, like halfway through the course. So it just felt like they were kind of going back to him as he was struggling through the course. And I don't know, it kind of made me uncomfortable watching that and then listening to them sort of break down his downfall in the Boston Marathon. So I didn't love that. Now, I also think it's one of the hardest events to broadcast because you basically have to fill two and a half hours where, no offense, but nothing really happens in the marathon. So you have to have all your stories and your anecdotes and your background info all ready to go. And I imagine a lot of their talking points about Kipchoge you know, hinged on the fact that he would be competing at the end and he wasn't. So I don't know, that was a little weird to watch. The women's race was much more exciting. I mean, that kick at the end was unbelievable. You look at her last mile, it was the fastest she ran all race, which is amazing. When she came over that last hill and I, you could just tell she was moving. That was impressive. That was cool to watch. I thought it was funny at the end. She finishes, she wins, couple photo ops, and then she's in the shoot and there's like a race official like, come on, keep moving. You can either break four hours in the marathon or literally win the Boston Marathon. And there's still gonna be someone at the end of the shoot being like, keep moving, keep moving. <laughs> when you're at your point of complete exhaustion. So no one is safe from the race official that has a job to do. Which I mean, look, you gotta clear the shoot. You gotta keep it safe. I respect it, but I always find that funny when I finish a race and my brain isn't working properly because I'm so exhausted and there's someone yelling at me to keep moving. <laughs> no one's immune. And then the last thing I noticed, the top three men's finishers wore Adidas. The winner of the women's race wore on and second place wore Adidas and third place wore Nike. So Nike's super shoe stranglehold appears to be loosening. You know, the rest of the brands have caught up and I know it's not just the brands, it's the actual runners, but you see the results in the Boston Marathon. So kind of interesting, the shoe wore continues to heat up. So yeah, that'll be the vlog for this week. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you soon. My 50 state challenge coming Saturday. See you there.